for Christians, the most powerful events in history were the death and resurrection of Christ. And so, of course, an ancient church stands on the spot in Jerusalem where these events took place. Called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it was erected in 325 and remains one of the most important and one of the most bizarre churches in the world. The many pilgrims who visit there every day to go to pray at the place of the crucifixion and the place of the tomb of uh, Jesus find it very inspiring but puzzling. They see many other things there, some very odd things, some very embarrassing things. One of these stands on a window ledge high up on the facade of the church. There, leaning against the outside wall, is a wooden ladder, strangely out of place. At first glance, it might appear that someone is doing some cleaning or some repair work on the church, except that the ladder has been leaning there for nearly 300 years. It's a long story and not a pretty one. The truth is, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is controlled by no less than six ancient denominations of Christians. The Greek Orthodox, the Roman Catholics, the Armenian Apostolic, the Coptic, Ethiopian, and Syriac Orthodox churches. Each one is insanely jealous of its own rights over certain sections of the church, and nobody dares step on the turf of the other. It sometimes happens that the monks of one denomination accidentally move a few inches too far over and invade the territory of another group, and then fist fights break out between these holy men of God. See how they love one another. Exasperated by these petty fights in the holy place, and seeing that these Christians were incapable of agreeing on anything, the Sultan himself came up with a brilliant solution in 1187. He took the keys of the church away from these holy monks and entrusted them not to any of the quarreling factions, but to a neutral party, one particular Muslim family who has guarded those keys ever since. And he gave the exclusive right of unlocking the Christian Basilica to a second Muslim family. And to this very day, a bizarre ritual is observed every morning. At 4.30 a.m., one Muslim man takes the ancient cast-iron church key from its secure place in his home and heads into the holy city, just as his father and grandfather and his ancestors have been doing for over 800 years. Once there in the old city, he hands the key to another man this one from the Muslim family entrusted with actually opening the lock. This man knocks at the gate, and the Christian monk inside lets down a ladder so that the huge high door can be unlocked by the Muslim man entrusted with this task. He then hands the key back to the first man, who takes it back home for safekeeping. At 7.30 in the evening, the two men return and go through the same ritual to unlock or to lock the church. And for the greater part of the last millennium, this strange, elaborate arrangement has kept the Christian holy men from killing each other over ownership of the keys. Yet fights still frequently break out among them, because each of the denominations insists on its own rights and privileges and insists that no one else is a true follower of Christ. On occasion, when their fists are not enough, they pick up heavy candlesticks and metal crucifixes to use as weapons against each other, and then people end up in the hospital. You can't make this stuff up. 
Sometimes the Muslim custodians try to make peace, but other times the Jewish police have to be called in to break up these holy brawls. And that strange ladder at the window? Well, sometime in the 18th century, it seems that some workmen placed it there while doing repairs on the church. Nobody knows for sure who he was, or more importantly, which denomination he belonged to. And so nobody dares to touch it or put it away, for fear of stepping on somebody's territory and provoking a holy war. By an old arrangement, nothing can be done, nothing can be altered, nothing can be moved without the agreement of all six Christian groups inside. For many centuries, they have not been able to agree on anything, not even the removal of a ladder. So the ladder is still standing there, an eloquent testimony to human pride, envy, vanity, and that most ridiculous form of petty stubbornness that seems to come so natural to the self-righteous religious fanatic. When in 1964 Pope Paul VI visited the Holy Land, he noticed the ugly ladder so out of place in the house of God. And when he learned the story, he was both embarrassed and horrified at how far we have come from the teachings of the gentle Christ, who wanted nothing more than that all be one. But then the Pope nodded sadly, and with the voice of a prophet, decreed that that ladder should remain right where it is, as a painful and shaming reminder for all to see until that great day when the various churches would begin to love one another, embrace one another, and live together in harmony. Who belongs to God's flock? Who are the people of God? From time immemorial, the bloodiest wars have arisen when people of religion, any religion, have claimed to own exclusive rights to God, arrogantly declaring, We belong and you do not. We are God's people and you are not. How different the message of the Good Shepherd. How different, too, the message of the Shepherd of Rome, who washes the feet of the people of God, women and men, Muslim, Hindu, every sort of Christian, every sort of human being, smashing all boundaries, ignoring the ladder, eloquently proclaiming the universality of God's flock. Who are the people of God? People! Any people, all people, every person created in the image of God. And I have never met one who was not. Through the violence, through the chaos, through the hypocrisy and absurdity of human arrogance comes echoing the long-forgotten message of a gentle shepherd. My sheep hear my voice each in a different way, for I speak to each in a different way. I know them, I know them all, far better than they could ever know themselves. They follow the best they can, and when they fall, as all of them do, I am there to pick them up. I have eternal life, and so do they. How could they ever perish? They are mine. No one, not even the other sheep, can take a single one of them out of my hand. The Father is greater than all, greater than all their petty differences, their petty jealousies, their petty foolishness, their petty pride. We are all one, for we are all of God. It is time, finally, to hear that shepherd's voice. 
It is time to take down that silly, hateful old ladder and bury it forever. It is time to see one another for what we are and what we have always been, beloved members of one amazing, enormous, wonderfully diverse flock called the beautiful family of God. Thank you.